I'm Julie, a fan ballser, and I am here with the super duper talented Sarah Matthews. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Julie. How Thanks are you? I'm good. So I know that you are a printmaker and a bookmaker and an artist of all kinds. How do you really define what you do? I generally say I'm a printmaker who takes those prints and makes books with them. But I make all kinds of things. I've been making things since I was a child with my mother. So I guess the easiest way to say is I'm an artist. <laughs> That's true. You know, I never thought about it, but it, we do always want to define sort of like what kind of artist we are and what we do. And like, I, I don't know, do you need to? <laughs> That's why my website says I am Sarah Matthews artist because <laughs> I did I was defining like I'm I, I was a soist I, I was listing all the things and it was got was getting convoluted and so I just said I'm an artist yeah it's hard easy. because I think like all of the like official advice about like artist statements and everything else always says like that you need to somehow define what you do describe it as if somebody could read that paragraph and sort of visualize what you do which is ridiculous when you really think about it because of course if you could read a paragraph and understand it then why wouldn't you be a writer you ought to be an artist. <laughs> right who has time to do all that <laughs> I just want to get into making I want to get into my hands and some paint you know like yeah I, I hear you on that there well, one of the things I have to say is first, I have to recommend your YouTube channel to anyone who hasn't checked it out. You've got a fantastic YouTube channel packed with great tutorials and videos of all kinds. Thank you. I haven't made a video since October. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm about to, I'm just, I'm, I'm shifting like what I really want to do um, as far as making my videos. So stay tuned. There'll be new content coming at, in the new year. That's so interesting. You mean like the style of the video or the content of the videos? The content of the videos. I feel like I've done all the printing and the bookmaking. How many videos can I make of that? Whereas now I want to change it so that like I'll go and visit or experience a place, whether it's a museum or, or um, an installation, and then take what I get from that, the inspiration and make something from it. So that's where I want to go. That is super cool. It's sort of like mixing a vlog with like kind of a tutorial or something like our process video. It's an interesting mixture of things. I love it. Yes. And I'm not sure if it will be like, like that whole, if I say if I visit, say the National Museum of African American History and Culture and make something from that. I'm not sure if it's going to be one episode. It might be multiple episodes mm -hmm. for that one thing. So we'll mm -hmm. see how it goes once filming begins. And, well, I think uh, that makes so much sense, right? Because like it, it, inspiration, at least for me, isn't one episode, right? It isn't like, I see yeah. it, I make it. Like it usually travels down a long and winding path of other stuff to get to that moment. Right, exactly. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm I'm anticipating it probably be two or three videos per thing, mm -hmm. but the end goal is to do ten inspirations to have ten pieces for a show that I don't have a space mm -hmm. for. I don't know where it's going to be, but the ten spaces, ten, I mean, ten pieces will be in a show together. Well, this is the whole manifesting thing, right? It's like, if you build it, they will come. If you make the right. 10 pieces for the show and you, you know, do the videos and people see the process, then there's interest. And then suddenly a space appears and you've got a show. Right. And then I feel like when they go visit the pieces, then they can go and look at my process. So it's all, you know, comes together. And the very fact that I'm saying this <laughs> will make me, well, my earring fell off. Will make me um, will make me do it. So, what are some of your favorite places around you that you go for inspiration? Are there particular galleries and museums that you really like? Um, so, the most recent 
um, museum I went to was a National Museum of African American History and Culture. And they have a, on the fourth floor on the top, it's just all arts and music. And so there's so many things up there that, you know, definitely I was ex inspired by. The Hershorn is a really great museum to visit. The National Gallery of Art, they just had the Afro-Atlantic Histories um, exhibit recently. Uh, and so uh, DC is just like a plethora of museums that you can go to visit and including Baltimore too. So there's always something to go and see. And also there's a lot of galleries to go visit too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see you have an impressive inspiration wall behind you. Thank are you. Are these your prints? Or are they a mixture of prints that you've bought and made? Um, most of these prints are by Amos Paul Kennedy. Uh, he is a letterpress printer. Um, so the one that says most women have hot flashes, I have power surges. She said while glistening is when I, I when I saw it, I, I had to get it. Um, this one is about um, Frederick Douglass. About once you re once you what is it? Once you learn to read, you will be forever free. So a lot of his stuff is um, not only visually with the words, but he has a lot of backgrounds and layers. And so that appeals to me as an artist because I love adding layers. And then some of them are um, that I printed in, um, like this one here says, um, In Your Name We Rise, George Floyd. This one I printed at um, Pyramid Atlantic and that was for a community print. Someone else designed it. Mm -hmm. But I volunteered to help print it. So some of these are things that I printed and some of the things I collected. That's awesome. I like to have a mix of like stuff I've made with stuff I admire. And then you kind of see how your work intersects with other people's work, which is always interesting. Yeah. And I will say, I do follow Amos Paul Kennedy on Instagram. I love his work. He's so hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And to yes. the point, you know, so. It is. And plus the prints are beautiful. Like he just, he makes typography look like sexy and fun. And it harkens back to like lots of old things you've seen, except it has like a fresh take on everything. I really, I like his work a lot. He's one of my favorites. Who are some other printmakers or artists that you admire? Bisa Butler, even though oh. she's technically oh. not a printmaker, but I love her quilts. Oh my gosh, they're so amazing and visual. Yeah. And the fact she just takes she takes scraps of fabric and to be able to make something so lifelike is completely amazing to me. Yeah. Um, I remember hearing an interview with her, by the way, that blew my mind because she was saying that she had, I guess her parents both work at a college and she had... Um, they had like mentioned to the college art gallery that like their daughter made some stuff. And so like, I think she, she said like the curator was kind of like being nice to her and was like, okay, let's see whatever you have. And she like unfolded her stuff and the curator was like, what? what? <laughs> you know? And that's like, 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 more. More. yeah, it was like, do you know what this, you are amazing. <laughs> and so I think it was like, she was kind of like, Oh, maybe there's something here. Yeah. I'm glad she stuck to it because right? her stuff is amazing. It is. So, it is. And, well. and I think uh, uh, Faith Ringgold is another quilt maker that she's inspired by too. Uh, I found Faith before I found Lisa. And um, I just love the fact that, because you, you would think, you know, there's like this fine line. We talked about this before in a previous interview. the fine line between fine art and craft. And I love that Faith just stands right in the middle. And and even if she hand paints the word instead of printing them, um, it's just like she just I don't know. She inspires me to just do what I do and love what I do. That's awesome. So it's interesting that you're inspired by so many quilt makers. Have you ever quilted? Yes, with my mother when I was a mm. child. Yeah, we used to. Yeah, my mom used to make a bunch of stuff throughout the year, and then you know before Christmas we would go and sell the wares at Craft Bazaar. So there were dolls and bunnies and you name it, we made it by hand. So that's probably why, I mean, I do, when people say, well, what is your hobby? Sewing is my hobby. <laughs> I love sewing. I have made some prints that I printed on fabric and then turned them into quilts. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like Visa by no means, but you know. I, Very few people on earth could probably <laughs> say that. <laughs> Nowhere near, but you know, I've hung them on the wall and displayed them in galleries and stuff like that, but they're not, they're kind of piecemeal, but 
they're there to tell a story. That's how I feel. Well, I think that a lot of quilts tell a story. I mean, originally, right, quilts were made from scraps that people had of leftovers, clothes, curtains, bits, Mm -hmm. sacks. And so it was almost like a scrapbook of your life. You could remember those jeans. You could remember, you know, that shirt. You could remember the dress that got worn out. I mean, whatever it was. And so I think that people have returned in a way in quilt making to telling a story. For a while, it was purely aesthetic. And then I think people have come back around to understanding um, it as an art medium and that it does need to tell a story, which actually is an interesting question, which is, do you believe that all art needs to tell a story? I think sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I think, I think if I book, I was thinking, I'm about to install some stuff into a show today. And I was thinking about like, all the prints that I've made with woodblock and they do tell a story. Um, but then there are some things that I've made where I just made for the pure joy of it. And it doesn't have to have a story. It's just me getting out whatever it is that's inside me, um, whether it's anxiety or depression, just getting it out and making it. And if someone sees something into it, in it, then that's great. But I didn't make it to tell a story. I made it to, to get those emotions out. That makes sense. Well, that actually starts to get to a question of like, what is story? Does story have to have like a long narrative or is story meaning like, you know, it's the old, it's the old thing about, is it Hemingway who they said they were, he was challenged to write the shortest story ever. And he said, uh, you know, baby shoes never worn for sale. (laughs) And it's like, that's a story. That 100%, you know, there's a story in there. I mean, all the clickbait yeah. headlines, those are stories. So the guess the question is like, if you have like an emotion or a thought going into your work and you're not just doing pure aesthetics, isn't there naturally then always a story because you can't help yourself? You know, that's true. I, I think that's true because um, everything that I start with, okay, so like when we did, Crop December or even like um, print October, like all those days that we did those prints, it was out of pure fun and joy, right? But through that process, I was learning more about myself and how I was layering my prints. So when it came time to make something that was serious, I could take those learnings from that joy session and put it into the serious piece. And yet people saw the joy. (laughs) And this serious piece, even though, <laughs> even though that wasn't my intent, you know what I mean? Right. Because right. they see the bright colors and the layers mm-hmm. and they think, oh, that's joy, that's happiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's where it started. But I was mm-hmm. trying to deliver this serious conversation. Well, it's almost like you were practicing joy. And so it naturally was in there because it became a part of your process. Yes. Yeah, You know, I, I am interested because I, I've been preaching lately the need for people to have, I think it gets called a sketchbook, but it's more like a studio notebook. It's some kind of place to practice, you know, yeah. and a lot of people who can't draw think that they have to have some sort of like, you know, beautifully articulated human anatomy drawings in order to have a sketchbook. And I keep saying like, no, printmakers need a sketchbook or a studio notebook and, you know, all sorts of people. Quilters need one. It's, it's just a place to dump your brain and to practice things like Carve December. Now, every Carve December, you do something that I think is genius, which is you make a little book. So that all of your prints are in one place. So it's like you can kind of see your development and your thought process, which basically turns sort of uh, a a fun exercise into something that can be really seriously useful for you as an artist in your growth. This is this is true. But the very first time I did Carve December and Printtober that first year, Mm -hmm. I didn't save any of those prints. I don't even remember what I did or what. So the next year. I had this old sketchbook from when I took um, drawing one. Now, I feel like I'm not a great drawer at all. Like, I I mean, yeah, I got an A in the class, but I felt like I struggled. Like, I didn't know what, like, draw this egg with the shadow and, and the drapes. And I, I can't get it. It doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me, that class. But I took that sketchbook and just filled it up with prints. Even though I had drawings, I just filled it up with prints. And as as I progressed, you could tell. Because there was one point where 
I overlaid like two stamps accidentally and then it clicked like, oh, that's right. I do like layers. And so as I progressed, you can see I'm started adding more colors on top of each other. But that book is not this. It's like really big. And it was my original drawing one book and it's full of prints. And I pulled out all the time, especially when I'm showing my students. I pull it out all the time as a reference for yeah. folks, especially because I know I don't like drawing. I don't feel like I'm a great drawer. I mean, you, if you give me a block, I can carve away and have fun. But I, if you give me a pencil, I don't know what to do with that. I, I, I tried. <laughs> I, I, that's not my, my way of, of making art. So I think it can not inspire people to just keep something, even if you just, whatever you do, even like, because Amos Paul Kenny said one thing to me, I saw him in person. Uh, he came, to, you. came. Yeah, I got to see him in person. He said, "Even if you took a, a paintbrush and and put it across the page, do something every day." He said, "Do something. Doesn't have to be. Uh, you got to make a specific piece of artwork. No, just do something. And then as you progress, you can add on to that thing, and then you'll get better. And it just starts from mm -hmm. trying and yeah. not giving up." I'm a huge fan of that. I think that like just even a tiny something every day just so that you're in there, you're committed to it. It's part of your daily life. I often say that it's the artistic lifestyle, meaning yeah. like it very much, it's like you breathe it. It actually sounds like your video series very much is part of that lifestyle. The idea that part of your life is you go places, you see things, you're inspired by them and then output comes, you know? Yeah. Well, a lot of times people would ask me, well, how did you come up with this? Or what are you going to do with that when you're done? And so I feel like this will be an answer to that question for them. Like, how did I figure it out? And then what do I do after? With I think it's so <laughs> smart. I think it's so smart. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch. I will definitely be a viewer. Thank now, you. I have to ask you, of course, about the Christmas tree in your background. Yes. Because right now yes. it's July. So what is the Christmas in July? Well... To be honest, during the pandemic, um, I just kept out my Christmas stuff for a long time. I have like, I'd say eight Christmas trees. And then I have, yeah, they're different sizes. Don't, don't think they're like large. I have like three large ones. And then my kids decorate one. I have one for the living room. And then there's one going to be down here in the basement. Then I have two of these. And then I have the small, you know, the, um, Atlantic mold Christmas trees that they're made out of ceramic and you put the little beads in there and the mm -hmm. colors I have plenty of those I collected to the wet uh, going to the thrift store and then um, I decorate everything with that and so it was just you know even though we were home mm -hmm. it gave me joy to see the decorations and stuff I am and a so huge fan of that yeah <laughs> to it, man, any way you can yeah, so this is in my mess studio. This is my Christmas tree studio. I'm sorry, my studio Christmas tree. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, the lesson is the Turkish map fold ornaments. And this is just my up my alley because um, I used to live in Japan. And when I was in high school, we uh, learned about the thousand paper crane folding. And so I came home after learning that story, I came home. And I folded thousands of, of cranes and they were hanging around in my the ceiling, in my bedroom. So making these is just like something <laughs> was like, I got to do this because I had, I was teaching people how to make this as a book. But I'm like, this could be an ornament. So, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And one of the things that I like so much about your project, besides the fact that obviously it's beautiful, but I'm a big technique geek, is that like people are learning a printmaking technique. You're showing them how to make a stamp. You're showing them, you know, how to print it. You're showing them as well, like the Turkish map fold, which, as you said, can be used for books, can be used for dimensional objects like this. I mean, so it actually is like so many different techniques and ideas. I was totally geeked out. And I was wondering if I had the finger ability to make them small enough to turn them into earrings. Yes, I, mean, I have made them out of vellum and they were this small. Mm. I don't have, I don't know what I, I think I smashed them or something. But yeah, <laughs> you can make them out of earrings. Look, you gotta be that very cool. careful. Use a use a bone folder because my my fingers are huge. In fact, my hands are bigger than my husband's hands. So, <laughs> a 
like typing on phones is very difficult for me with my thumb. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. If you use a bone folder, like a really thin bone folder, not your fingers, you should be able to knock it out. That's awesome. I love it. So I, I just think there's so many possibilities with it. And as always, you're such a, one of the things about your teaching is that you always manage to take complicated things and make them really simple and accessible and very much like your videos feel so casual. Like you're just chatting with me and you're like, oh yeah, you just do this and this and this. And then, and I'm watching you and I, I literally, when I watch your videos, it makes me run to my studio and be like, I got the supplies. I got to do this now. It's awesome. Thank you. I think it comes with time because at the beginning when I started teaching, I was that very technical, you must follow this. And as things progress, I kind of taken the, the stance of it's just paper. It'll be okay. We will survive. <laughs> It'll be all right. If it gets messed up, we just make another one. It's it's okay. And I that's how I, I tell I tell my students is all the time it's just paper the funny thing is i teach at micah and my the last the last week when we we're doing um critiques the students kept saying it's just paper they kept saying exactly what i said it's just paper <laughs> that's great that's great <laughs> it's just paper because we get so caught up like it has to be exactly what how sarah did it no it doesn't if you decide you want to cut the corners and make it frilly that's, that's your project. If it's your paper, mm -hmm. do what you mm -hmm. want, you know, mm -hmm. have fun. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So I read a book with my son that he loves, um, which is called something like I am an artist. And in it, one of the issues is at school, they only get one piece of paper. And if you mess up that paper, you don't get another paper. And this kid is like devastated by this idea, right? And so he ends up making like a bargain with the art teacher that he can get like a second piece of paper if he does <laughs> it well and stuff. But I was thinking about that, about how like, you know, the idea that like there's more paper is such an important idea to give people, whether they're at school or at home, you know what I mean? There's another piece of paper. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Yeah, unless it's that it really expensive art paper that I like to buy at the art supply store and then hoard because I'm afraid to mess it up because it's so pretty. Well, that's why I have like a bunch of sketchbooks that haven't been used because it's like <laughs> paper's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to lose it. Yeah, it's yeah. true. We all suffer from that. Well, Sarah, I can talk to you all day, but it's time for us to wrap up. So if people want to connect with you online, what's the best way to do that? Go to my website. It's imsarahmatthews.com. There are tabs for um, classes, my CV, and then contacting me. So, okay. and also my social media. Yeah, and people should definitely subscribe to your YouTube channel so they get that notification when your new video series drops. Yes, and I'm gonna drop them like Beyonce. Like, <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for the video then. All right. <laughs> So if you want to check out Sarah's uh, video also in The Artful Holiday, I hope you'll do that. And you can find that at balzerdesigns.com. And class yes. starts on August 1st. And we'd love to see you. So thanks so much.